Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Esports Report this week, and we are live from PAX East. We'll be headed there for the MLG COD League Season 1 playoffs. We started with 10 teams down to the final six, and there will be $15,000 on the line for the LAN tournament. I should mention that I will not be the only one casting the event. My dude Revan, formerly of Curse New York, now on the management squad for Curse. He will be there casting in the booth with me, as well as two very special guest casters. We made some calls, and Nadeshot and Clayster have been able to make the move out to PAX East for, uh, with us for the weekend. They'll be joining us in the booth, providing commentary, expert insight into all of those games. And of course, we'll be kicking off the event with an all-star game. Now, what gets me excited about this is Rev and I are going to be picking for Team 1. Clayster and Nadeshot are going to be picking the lineups for Team 2. We're not playing. We're just going to be casting. But it's going to be an internal battle amongst the casters of who can set the best lineup. It's like playing manager for a COD team. Speaking of managers, props to the guys over at Justice as well as Curse COD making some major moves today. Same thing goes for the team over at Denial Esports and, of course, our friends at Team Caliber. Lots of roster changes going on, and as a team manager, it is not something easy to do or keep track of with all the players deciding where they want to go, trying to make the business activities behind it, behind closed doors come together is always tough. So congratulations on all their success. Now it's time to talk about some of the guys that are still looking to find themselves on a top team. Some of the guys we expect to go very high up in our draft on April 17th for the MLG COD League Season 2, or could potentially even land on some of the starting lineups for COD Season 2. Here's a list of our free agents, some of the top 16. Now, please note, several names are left off this list. This is not all. Some major names, as we still don't know what is going to happen between Strictly Business, uh, Phase Black, a few of the other squads out there, Rise Nation, uh, of course, Fears mentioning on Twitter that he is now leaving that squad. But here's a look at some of the notable free agents. Ricky will not be playing with Curse Las Vegas coming into Season 2. Fizzerp is not playing with Denial. We have Nex, who showed that he can lead a squad to COD Champs when he played with Wild Gaming. Spacely has been making major moves on GBs always. He is up there with John, uh, Strife, Flawless, Doubt, Heist, Revan, Wheats, Pac-Man, Looney, Fears, Assassin, TJ Haley, Snipe Down, Chino. Uh, you got to think about all of the players that made it to the U.S. Championship and just fell short. And of course, Methods should be on this list as well as he was on TK when the list was initially created. He is now looking for a squad. So many free agents. I want you guys to tweet me don't tweet your name and be funny. Tell me, who do you seriously think would be your number one pick if you're coming in with the 12 seed like Erupt is right now and you know you have the pick of the litter of all the guys that are not on a starting lineup, who would you go after? Who is your first round draft pick? I want to announce 12 different names because that's how many spots will be given in round one. Of course, 48 total players will be joining the starters in COD Season 2. From the COD League... To the 2K, it's time to talk with my good friend from Esports Nation. We're actually not best friends yet, but I'm sure this is just the beginning. Thomas Reese is now on the line. Thomas, how you doing, brother? I'm doing awesome. Thanks for having me on, Bucket. Uh, Thomas, for everyone out there who doesn't know what you do over at Esports Nation, give us a little background of what is your title and, and what do you do on a weekly basis for them? All right, so my title with ESN is the Managing Editor. Basically what I do before they publish any articles, I'll go through and I'll proof it. I'll make sure that that's in with an AP style and I make sure all the players name are right. And specifically one of my tasks that I kind of put my responsibility on is to do the weekly 2K and 5K tournaments. You've been doing a phenomenal job uh, with these every single week. You know, I even take a look at the notes for to see all the matches that I wasn't able to catch while casting, as well as if I'm out of town like I was this past week and while at a wedding. You were watching the series very closely. Um, let's get right into the action and talk about the two teams that made it all the way to the finals. TK playing with Apathy and the Bulldog Methods went to the finals, and they met up against Phase Red. Now, Phase Red is basically the same Phase squad that you guys saw at COD Champs, but with Proofy swapped out for Theory. These two teams met up in that grand finals, and it went all the way to game number five. What went down there in our 2K? Definitely. It was it was an insane get to tournament because there were so many upsets that happened early and we got to see phase red in action for the first time. And let me tell you, I was impressed. 
they had excellent communication throughout the entire tournament and they didn't even drop a single map up until the semifinals against elevate wow. so yeah they and i think that um they ended up going nine and one on the day before the finals which was insane i know they lost the first two games of the finals but you got to see some of their resilience and they're a brand new team so i mean coming back and forcing a game five of search and destroy on sovereign that was just insane and, and this one went all the way down to the wire, and, and TK was able to come out on top of it. What did you see from Team Caliber, and, and what did you see from Apathy playing with Gunjar and Sharp specifically? Definitely, ap Apathy was TK's clutch factor in that. He came up so big when they needed him, especially on Search and Destroy in that final game in the finals. So... Um, basically, every time they needed him to make a good play, I know that earlier when you were talking to Sharp, uh, he said that it was he, whenever he needs somebody to clear somebody out on a flag on domination, he came through. And especially, um, I just would like to point out on Search and Shore on Warhawk on game two in that series, he was down actually, and he was down 0 and 5. And he came back, he completely turned it around, and that was huge for his team. And then they ended up taking that map and going up 2 on the series. So he finished positive in that game, even though he started off a little rough. But it was it was definitely a clutch uh, moment for his team. Uh, now, TK, they actually had a, a pretty impressive run here. Let's take a look at some of the teams they took down in this 2K. They met up against Savage. Uh, they went up against Demon's Pickup Squad. And then they went up against Erupt. Now, Erupt is a squad that I think everyone needs to be on the lookout for. They did make it through the play-in tournament on Saturday. The next day here on Sunday, they've had to face off against TK, and TK actually took them down to zero. This is the Erupt squad that sent FaZe Black packing the, uh, the round before in the round of 16. Did you get a chance to see that matchup at all? And what do you know about this Erupt squad? Because I, I constantly see them in your 2K write-ups. Yeah, Erupt has just kind of bursted onto the scene recently in the past few 2Ks. Uh, they've, they're they a very, very, very strong online team. They seem to win a ton of gunfights, and it's, it's just really interesting to see them progress through these tournaments because they're a fairly relatively new team. So it's, it's just been really interesting to see them make upset after upset in these 2Ks, um, especially like you got to see them take out FaZe Black, and I know FaZe Black is a brand new team but they are still one of the best slaying teams out there. And for that to happen, it was insane. So e Erupt went down 0-2, and then TK met up with Donut Shop, who in the previous round went up against Optic uh, in their pickup squad with Dito and Fizzer playing in that one. Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit of the backstory on, on that Optic matchup, and then tell me about this uh, TK Donut Shop matchup. Well, Optic was the... It, it was with... Dito and he he obviously was at the top of the leaderboards the whole time for for the squad. I don't know what was going on with Nate Shot or Embos, but through that matchup they did lose originally. However, uh, the team that they lost to, which I believe was Ping on Ping, they were disqualified. So they got to come back and play Donut Shop for a chance to go in the semifinals. And Donut Shop had already won several upsets throughout the day, so it was a very very tight match and it was a best of three and it went all the way down to the wire on the game of blitz and it was just it was an awesome thing to watch so donut shop takes down the optic pickup squad playing with dito and fizzer uh, nate shot and nembos of course the four on that squad uh not only did they take down optic but they also took down curse youth which i thought was really surprising yes. and donut shop actually finished in the top four mm -hmm. so donut shop that's grim I think he's the only original member from when I saw them at the start of Black Ops 2. Is this a team that has done this multiple times in the 2Ks? Is this just a fluke weekend? What do you think happened there for them? Well, honestly, this was... I've been doing the 2Ks for a while, and this was the first time that I've seen their name pop up on any big upsets. So I don't know if they had just not been playing recently in those tournaments, but it was just... It was really cool to see them come out swinging, and especially with the 27th seed in the tournament, I think it was. And they, they, they took on upset after upset. So I really like to see more from them in the future. Well, speaking of upsets, let's take a look at some of the teams that fell short in this past Sunday's 2K. Uh, the money team, that was Killa playing with Miracles and Neslo. Uh, they did not have Stainville as the, the official fourth of justice. But these guys went out round of 16. Same thing went down with Warriors. Now, this was a squad with Ricky. Uh, do you remember exactly who Ricky was playing with on that Warrior free agent squad? 
I do not because I did not watch any of the streams of that. However, I believe that Do Denial was the one that took them out early. Yes. I yes. Denial so, took them out round of 16 as well there. Yeah, and I, it was just really surprising to see all those teams fall in that round specifically. So I, I did not get a chance to watch that stream, um, but I, I know that they were ranked really high up in the seed, or at least the Warrior squad was, and it was interesting to see them get knocked out. Yeah, it was, it, they were actually our fourth seed overall, which I found incredibly surprising. Yeah. Our, our sixth seed, Curse Youth, who normally does really well in these 2Ks and 5Ks, they went out in the round of 32 to Donut Shop and probably the biggest early round upset. Phase Black fell as they were the number seven seed coming in, fell to Erupt, who is a very strong search and destroy squad. Talking to Proofy, it sounded like Phase Black was, uh, they won game one, then things went wrong in game two and game three, as that was actually Blitz that sent them home. And then Vex, a squad that we thought were gonna do really well, real sinister, took them out in the round of 32. So lots of interesting storylines here. I think we're gonna see a whole new kind of changing of the guard though in this next Sunday's 2K tournament. Of course, this weekend is PAX. Uh, just kind of overall in all of the 2Ks, what does it look like to you? Who do you think is the most consistent player in online play right now? Hmm, that's, if I had to take it from this past week, it would definitely be classic uh, from Phase Red. That The only reason why I'm saying that is because I watched his stream on MLG TV for most of the day on Sunday, and he consistently put up 30 bombs after 30 bombs. And I know for a fact when they were playing Elevate in the semis, he went 30-10 with 10 captures on Freight wow. Blitz. So, I mean, if I had to choose any MVP from that tournament, I would definitely pick Classic. And like I said, their entire team was on point with their communication. It was great. I love it. Well, I think a 30-10 and 10 performance deserves an MVP for that game. And like you said, Classic has been a monster all game long. Now, a lot of people have been giving him crap for the way he played at COD Champs. I think he was just uncomfortable. Uh, talking to Theory, you know, he said that Classic's a slayer. With Proofy yeah. and J-Cap on the same lineup, he couldn't really play that role. Theory is going to take on a little more objective. Classic's going to be able to play fast and fierce. I'm excited to see what he does on LAN with this new phase lineup. Uh, Thomas, I want to thank you for coming on. I know you guys are constantly putting out content over there at Esports Nation. Where can we find you guys? And what are some of the, the best articles that people might not know about that are on the site? Well, we actually have tons of articles on the site that backdate for years. But however, we, we really like to focus on the different roster changes right now. We're putting out um, several articles today specifically on all the roster changes and how the consequences of these new lineups might affect the scene in the future. So that's definitely something that you guys should check out over at uh, esportsnation.com. There is a hyphen in between esports and nation. And uh, that's pretty much what's going on right now. Got it. Well, thank you so much for coming on this show today. Make sure you guys follow him on Twitter. He is T. Reese Jr. Uh, follow Esports Nation as well. They're a fantastic partner here at MLG. And we're almost at 6 o'clock, so thank you guys for tuning in for a two-hour time block. Tomorrow's show most likely starting at 4 o'clock. Just got to make sure my TD is not going to already be in PAX. And, of course, tune in for the PAX week and there's no show Thursday. I'm heading out to Boston. We'll be kicking off the MLG season one Call of Duty playoffs all-star game. Kicks things off 10 a.m. on Friday. It'll be 10 to 6 p.m. all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thanks for tuning in. If you missed any of the news today, you want to hear about Curse, Justice, Denial, or TK, stay tuned. The rebroadcast is coming up immediately after this.